welcome to Travel Stories with Marsh podcast, the first travel podcast in the Middle East. If you love the world around you and you love exploring landscapes, cultures, cuisines and cities, then you are in the right place because here every week we'll be talking to an incredible travel enthusiast who will take us on a fascinating journey around the world by sharing their travel stories. Today's very special guest is someone who truly believes in leaving behind a flourishing planet for future generations, a planet that is still thriving and is lush, despite the wounds created by global warming and other threats. Vikram Krishna needs no introduction in the world of banking. And after a 28-year-old career in the corporate world, today, as the co-founder of Sacred Groves, he is committed to saving forests and natural habitats around the world from destruction. Vikram, it's such a pleasure to have you here on the podcast today, and I'm so looking forward to going on a journey through nature with you. Well, thank you for having me over. I'm excited as well. So, you know, while doing my little research, which I just told you, I found that what you do now was actually, um, you kind of stumbled upon it by a visit to a forest. So tell us a little bit about <laughs> that. So um, we've been, um, uh, we went to Meghalaya mm. uh, and we visited a sacred forest uh, in Meghalaya. And that was quite transformational mm -hmm. because that was a time where Manisha and I, my wife and my co-founder, we were thinking about you know, buying our own forest and protecting it. Focus. Can I just interrupt and I like for people who don't know what is a sacred forest? Yeah, so sacred forest is actually a forest that local cultures, mm -hmm. uh, they pray to it. Okay. So it's it, it's an integral part of the local ethos and, uh, you know, customs. Right. And religion as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we came across this sacred forest mm -hmm. in, um, in Meghalaya. And I'd been reading about sacred forests as well. So mm -hmm. there were 10,000 sacred forests in India. Mm -hmm. There's sacred forests in Japan and Peru and, you know, essentially all over the world. So I was curious what a sacred forest is. Mm -hmm. So we came across a person who uh, agreed to take us um, inside the forest. He belonged to the local tribal community. Mm -hmm. And in we went. And it was magical. And that was really the pivot when uh, the switch went on for sacred groves so yeah. that really is the brand that we represent and of course now we're protecting forests in different parts of the world and right. we've got now companies and people from 49 countries wow <laughs> in, the, in the three years that we have launched so there are many more mavericks like us who yeah. believe that you know nature needs to be protected yeah, yeah. and uh, we wouldn't want to do whatever we can uh, to make it happen yeah no of course you know nature needs to be protected and the fact that um you know this is a travel podcast but you know even travel i think in yes. today's world comes with a lot of responsibility yeah. and you know i was going through your um website and i'm just going to read some uh, you know statistics that i just saw which is from the sacred groves uh, website which says 40 percent of the assessed plant species are in danger 3.16 percent right now and then we've had one of the highest summers this year so, you know, as someone who was out there so committed to saving, uh, you know, natural um, forests, etc. How do you think as a traveler, you know, people who are listening and people who actually love to travel, what kind of, you know, everyone can do a little something in their yeah. own way. So yeah. what can we do as uh, yeah. people who love the world and still want that nature around us? What can we do to protect it in our own little yeah. way? So we were recently, mm -hmm. we were in the... Periyar Tiger Reserve in Kerala mm. and we were staying in a property called CGH Spice Village mm -hmm. yeah everything is local yeah um, the staff there is from 50 square kilometers food is locally sourced mm -hmm. and they have a very clear policy of wasting as less as possible so mm -hmm. most of the stuff that gets served to you mm -hmm. is is homegrown mm -hmm. yeah so I think the first thing I want to make a point is make sure that you're you, you are staying if you're passionate about this yeah you're staying in places that are doing something uh, because they ne also need to be rewarded. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. need to be rewarded with business so that they can grow yeah. and, you know, scale that up and yeah. spread that. Second is, if you're staying in a place where you find um, things that are not right, mm -hmm. yeah, give that feedback to the organization. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed to see how respect, you know, how respectful, receptive mm. some of these uh, hotels and uh, restaurants are, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I make it a point, for example, I go to a restaurant and they, they serve me water in a plastic bottle. I refuse mm. that water. Mm. Yeah. And then the owner would typically come by. So is there an issue? And I, mm. and I would tell them that, mm. look, plastic bottle of water hurts our sensibility. Mm. Mm. So therefore, we will not have water in your in your yeah. restaurant. Mm. And I've had restaurants writing back to us saying that, hey, thank you so much for that feedback. Mm. It's taken us a month, but now we've switched over to these bottles. And here's a picture of what we've done. Mm. Um, a third is that wherever you go, uh, try to make sure that your own footprint is as marginal as possible. Mm -hmm. right? So for example, when we do uh, forest travel, we come across nature lo lovers who have backpacks full of plastic products. Mm. Yeah. So it's just that when you're doing nature travel, you need to understand the fact that you're a guest in that ecosystem. Yeah. So you have a choice to make. Are yeah. you a good guest? Yeah. Uh, are you a welcome guest? Mm. And if yes, then, you know, what should you do about that? It's just respecting, yeah. you know, nature and leaving it the way it is supposed to be. Absolutely. So, you know, coming back to the podcast now, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty excited to know where you're taking us on a journey today. A recent month that I really enjoyed was um, a place called the Bay of Fundy mm -hmm. uh, in Nova Scotia, Canada. And we went to Nova Scotia because we're supporting forests there. Right. So uh, this is an area where I walked on the ocean floor. Wow. And, um, uh, you know, the tide rises by about 50 feet there. Mm -hmm. So uh, that area is also like a living museum. So when you walk on the ocean floor, the cliffs have about 300 million years of history. Mm -hmm. So we went with, you know, uh, a local who was very, very well aware mm -hmm. around. We walked in and then when the tide started coming in, we took the stairs back up and we saw the waters rising uh, about 50 feet. It was like a play with nature. It was like a play yeah. with nature. And then we zipped to another area mm -hmm. uh, because there's something called a tidal bow. Okay. So when the tide rises, yeah. right, so it rises um, and then rivers essentially become oceans. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So when the tide starts rising, then the waves of the ocean g defy gravity, you know, yeah. and then they go inland. That's so when they go inland, then it's almost like a tidal wave going in like, you know, five to seven kilometers. So we rushed in to a, to a, to a river bend mm -hmm. and we actually saw for ourselves the tidal bow coming in and it brings a lot of nutrients. So there's a lot of fish and there were a lot of birds. And then there was this, yeah, I mean, we were just so fascinated by it. So tell us a little bit more about the Bay of Fundy since you really, you know, yeah. you're so uh, amazed by it. And, yeah. you know, tell us a little bit more about why, you know, anybody should go there. What are the attractions? Yeah, it's it just that, you know, just imagine uh, what would it be to walk on the ocean floor? Mm -hmm. Something you can't do anywhere. No, you can't do anywhere yeah. else, right? Yeah. And I feel that, you know, some of these places spark imagination in very different ways, mm. right? So when you're walking on the ocean floor and you realize that, you know, in a few hours from now, this will be 50 feet under mm. Mm, and you look around and you see puddles and you see creatures that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. You look up at the cliffs. It just it just mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. So it just captured my imagination. I never thought mm. I could walk on an ocean floor. Mm. Yeah? And I did. Yeah. So would <laughs> yeah. you go back? I would go back. You would go I, back. I would go back. Yeah. Because I would like to experience it at different times of the day. Yeah. So the play of light. Uh, has a role to play Correct, in the yeah. experiences you get. Yeah. yeah. So the kind of pictures you can take uh, and the places that you can go further to. So I just saw one area. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's just so, so amazing that you would yeah. really want to go back yeah. and kind of catch it at different to. times of the day, perhaps. Absolutely. So, you know, you, you said you've been traveling since a very young age. And of yeah. course, now the way you travel is very different yeah. versus when you were younger. Yeah different times, different kinds of travels, just like that for all of us. But, you know, when you look back upon life, which is that one place that kind of may, you know, if you think about it, like this is that one place that made you realize that you actually really do love travel or, you know, was it a nature trail since you're so much into nature? What was it really? So I think my first uh, travel uh, that really caught my very, very serious attention was when we went to Mauritius. Mm. Yeah. So this is about 25 years back and Mauritius was still really green and, you mm. know, um, nature was, mm, you know, resplendent. So at that point in time, I went to an ebony forest. Mm. Mm. 
So I found that quite transformational. Yeah. And then there were these botanical gardens that I went to as well. And then there were some really interesting beaches. There was a volcano. Mm. So suddenly I found that in a, in like two days, I'd gone from a beach to a volcano to you know. Uh, <laughs> there's so much to forest, do there actually. Yeah. It's such a big in island. In two days, yeah. Yeah. So that's when I realized that you know there's something special. Mm, about this about this yeah yeah i think mauritius this, was the turning point yeah and after that we've done two to three trips every year mm. to different parts of the world since you've been traveling around so much and nature is a very important part for you when you travel which would be your all-time favorite destination or forest oh, okay and why so tough right yeah. so um Nature basic. I I'll give you a few. Yeah, mm -hmm. that I have something loved. which just comes at the top of your uh, but yeah, list. Yeah, I'll give you a few that are yeah. really top of my list. So, uh, visit to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Um, two things I remember till today very distinctly. We went to a place called Waitamo Caves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in Waitamo Caves, uh, you have to go in a boat and you have to lie down on the boat, and then you go through these caves and you reach this area which is a you know fairly large hall like cave yeah mm. and you reach a place where when you look up it's like the night sky with stars and these are glow worms wow yeah so that was incredible and then the other thing i really found fascinating was something called a tree fall yeah in new zealand in itself? new zealand so okay. we were in a place called doubtful sound mm -hmm. uh, which is basically a fjord mm -hmm. yeah and uh, the, these uh, mountains are like you know rocky mountains and over the years, mosses and lichens form a base layer. Then the plants come and the roots intertwine. And then that creates a surface for larger trees. And then the trees grow. There reaches a point where the weight of the tree uh, cannot be managed by the underlying support system. Oh. So it's all it almost tears off like wallpaper. So we saw a tree fall, you know, oh in front God. of us uh, happening. I think that was... It's incredible. Really, really stunning. Yeah. Then um, I would also give a big shout out to Philippines. Mm -hmm. I was stunned by the biodiversity that Philippines has. So mm -hmm. Philippines has a few thousand islands. Mm. So we went island hopping in Philippines. Um, How would you do that? I've always been very intrigued about this island hopping in Philippines. Yeah, so we went to uh, Koron Islands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you we, fly. So, you, so we were based in Dubai then. Mm. So from Dubai, we went to Manila. And from Manila, we flew to Koron Islands. Uh, I still remember the name. It's called Busanga Airport. Mm. Yeah, that's another concept. Mm. So we reached Busanga Airport. And then from there, we went to the resort, which was just the island was the resort. Yeah. And uh, then we won, went on an island hopping tour mm -hmm. from that resort over okay. the next couple of days. Right. So just in one day, just to give you the diversity of those islands and how different they are. The first island was... Uh, Island of Caves, mm. where one could snorkel and see breathtaking uh, biodiversity. Mm. Second island was volcanic. So you could climb up and then there was a freshwater lake in the middle of that island. Uh, the third island was, I mean, I, I've never seen more fishes in my life. It was like an aquarium wow. on steroids. Yeah, So that was the third island. The fourth island was a hot water spring. So uh, and this is all in a day. Uh, yeah, all in a few hours, right? So then we were in that hot water spring, and we'd done quite a bit of swim, and you know, climbed up mm. the mountain, right? So we were, we needed that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that whatever sauna therapy. Yeah, yeah. And so here we were sitting in that area, enjoying the benefits of a hot water spring. So there's so much. Amazing, yeah. One, so and big the, shout out to and Philippines. The, and the last one was a you know tropical rainforest and. It was so thick that yeah. there was only one trail that was going in. And and so much in just, yeah. you know, in a four day. Four hours. And what was hours. your base? What was your base? So Coron Island. Coron Island uh, yeah, was, was yeah. your base. So that's so where we were, we were staying. Okay. Highly recommended. I mean, you know, nature in every part of yeah, the world is yeah, just stunning. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Stunning. But, you know, even when you travel, I mean, there's so much that happens with us, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we have good experiences, bad yeah. experiences. Some places you go with a lot of expectation and it doesn't turn yeah. out like that. So yeah. what is that one travel blooper that you must have had? So we were in uh, Vancouver mm. uh, and uh, we planned a three-day to a place called Kelowna. Mm -hmm. So... Um, 
and it's a, it's a it's a beautiful country side and it's supposed to be the grape and wine country right and um, beautiful landscapes mm-hmm. so we were driving to kelona and um, suddenly i saw burnt fields around me mm-hmm. so i got down to on to to check what they are because that's our job as well mm-hmm. right so i got down we were looking at this examining it we were taking a few videos because we were wondering in the middle of nowhere why they why the fields burnt and then suddenly we felt that the intensity of the smell of burn mm. had increased quite substantially mm. so we went back to our car and uh, we got an alert that there's a forest fire ahead so and it was all happening all live happening at live, the time right so you're like where is the forest fire you know we were looking in the distance and then we saw a thin cloud of smoke mm. yeah and then uh, we quickly realized that it's becoming bigger than we have ever seen and there were embers coming mm. towards us because you know when when the forest fire happens and hot air rises and then the embers get spread over many many kilometers so what you see in the distance could be a fire next to you in the next second it's that fast it's that fast right wow. so then thankfully i was in a good car so but i was on a highway and it's a one way street so i went ahead 4 kilometers towards the fire so i drove as fast as i could yeah and then i turned and i looked back in the rear view mirror the fire was all around us oh so that God. fire took 50 lives that day and a town of about 150000 people had to get evacuated from that area so that was nightmarish yeah yeah so, so i don't think i would want to go back there again yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah cuz that was pretty much a question of life and death yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah. and how unprepared you are yeah for for such kind of natural disasters yeah. and it just so happened that this year we'd also gone uh, to mount vesuvius in italy mm mm-hmm. and when we were up on mount vesuvius we, i also saw the area all around mount vesuvius burned and apparently that was burned because of a forest fire and a lot of it is human influenced circumstances as yeah. well because when yeah. i studied why the forest fire had happened in that area mm. a lot of the biodiverse forests had given way to plantations okay so when you have a plantation right then one end results in the other end getting equally impacted another mm-hmm. one uh, that uh, i experienced that i didn't like at all was uh, in bali uh, in 2009 and that's uh, maybe that was also a trigger for us to become a lot more environmentally conscious mm. so i taken a family there uh, to do a glass bottom boat experience and bali had these mm. fantastic corals at that time So we went in and I'd, I'd taken a nice boat and I'd planned for it and I'd seen videos of it as well and I'd had a call with them so I knew what I was getting into. Mm. So we went onto the boat and for miles and miles and miles we only saw dead corals because a few months before our travel uh, the area the temperatures in that area had heated up. So all that we so we were looking up and not looking down. So I wouldn't want to do that either. Yeah. And this is really yeah. sad what you know is happening yeah, yeah. to you know nature around us absolutely so you know you gave us quite a few places which actually i haven't heard of before some mm. of um, even those little islands in philippines <laughs> but what would be your hidden gem if you had to give us one today so um since we're in dubai mm. um recently i went to a mangrove in kalba oh, okay yeah mm. so that's like a 2 hour drive away from here yeah and it's a 300 to 400 year old mangrove mm. mm-hmm. i just found it fascinating because we were able to go in and see a lot of things but what i love was that there's a endangered bird there called the arabian collared kingfisher and there only some 55 or 60 breeding pairs oh, no. left in the world and they're there and uh, we saw them and we experienced it yeah and we just loved it So in the UAE there are a couple of these hidden gems so there's that people don't talk about yeah, and people yeah. don't even go actually Correct. yeah so i just came across that yeah. and um, somebody recommended it as well i read about it mm. and i said looks really interesting let mm. me drive by and it's a beautiful drive uh, as well and you know so that's a that's something i would recommend and then we, uh, we when we started talking about this then we were also recommended the mangroves in abu dhabi mm. jubail island yeah those are very which beautiful was, yeah which were fantastic yeah. as well now i also know that you're a bit of a foodie 
So, and you would travel for food, you yes, said. Yes, yes, indeed. So, if you had to, if you could travel around the world in a day, mm. where do you think you would have your breakfast, your lunch and dinner? So, breakfast I'd probably do in London. Mm-hmm. Mm, I love the way they do their breakfast. Mm. Any particular place? We've had some place? fantastic breakfast experiences. Uh, so, we've had one at uh, the Ritz and Savoy. It's been interesting as well. St. James Park was fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, we've done a few breakfasts mm-hmm. uh, in London. Mm, lunch uh, I will do here in Dubai okay so my current favorite is Calicut Paragon oh yeah so I would go that's an old a, one though yeah it's an old one yeah. but I love it yeah. okay. so I just think it's absolutely fabulous yeah. it's recently been featured amongst the top 100 uh, restaurants yeah uh, in the world as well mm. uh, for dinner my god there's so many choices I would probably uh, look at Gagan uh, in, in Bangkok Bangkok mm. Uh, or also, um, I would say Bukhara mm-hmm. in New Delhi. In Delhi, yeah. yeah. Or Jaipur. Okay. Jaipur has some stunning meal experiences. Okay. Amazing. So it's a long list. I mean, I can, I can just go okay, on Okay, sure. Them. Yeah. But uh, could you finish everything in Gagan? Because I couldn't. I did. <laughs> like I did. So it, yeah. it, is a 20, it was a 25 course. I know, yeah. right? I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and it it's was, Indian food, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. even it comes with like, I'm like, towards yeah. the end, I'm like, I cannot. <laughs> yeah. But what was spectacular about Gagan is that uh, the 25th course, yeah. we ate that. Oh. Uh, of course, I prepared myself for it. So yeah. several days of starving. Yeah, I think I wasn't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so I... Starvation helps <laughs> yeah. when you want to focus yeah. on good food. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. So that was, that was quite that was So quite even remarkable. here in Dubai now, we know, you know, Dubai yeah. is so famous for all the food offerings. Oh I mean, God. we could just be here and yeah, yeah, dine. Yeah. I mean, like any cuisine, yes. you know, it's like yes. everything's around. Yeah. And you've been here for a long time. Yeah. So which are your favorite places for breakfast, oh lunch and God. dinner here in Dubai? Oh. So uh, this, I'll tell you this year's in- interesting experiences. So mm. we did uh, uh, Jones the Grocer at the West Beach. That's a beautiful area. And it's a really nice yeah. uh, experience. So that's breakfast. Mm. Mm. Lunch. Well, again, Calicut Paragon is back. And then uh, dinner. There, there's so many options. But uh, we've always enjoyed Pier Sheik. Mm. It's been something that we've been going there for the past uh, yeah. 10 years or so. Yeah. And we just enjoy. Yeah, and you know, the location. It's got that, yeah, the it's mix. got that vibe to it. And Absolutely. Also, it's got it's got some memories around it as well mm. for us. So special mm. locations, mm. reasons to celebrate. Mm. You know. Yeah, and it's also very beautifully located. Yeah. So yeah. And if you if you have someone over and you know they just have a day, for mm. example. It's a nice way to yeah, get them to is. experience the city. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, you also spoke about this really fabulous experience in Kalba, which I'm looking forward to going yes. actually. But is there any particular one experience in the UAE or in Dubai that you would highly recommend for anybody visiting? I mean, any nature trails here that yeah. you think would be really fantastic? So uh, I stayed in uh, Kasar al Sarab in Abu Dhabi which I thought was quite spectacular mm-hmm. because in the middle of nowhere. Like a staycation. Like a staycation. Yeah. So those dunes are really special. Mm. The nights are special as well because mm. you can see the night sky full of stars and they do a very good job, mm. you know, in, in curating that mm. experience. That's the Anantara, um, right? Hmm? It's the Anantara yeah. there, yeah. Then the other one that I really loved was the Al Maha uh, mm. resort, which is not too far away yeah. from Dubai. Yeah. I thought that was just stunning. Mm. And uh, what makes it even more interesting from our perspective is that they uh, are, um, you know, they're taking care of the Arabian oryx. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it was at one point in time almost near extinction and now it is still endangered. Mm-hmm. But they have a very successful program right. uh, for the past many years where they have been able to increase the population and that's flourishing. Mm-hmm. So we love that experience as well. It's special yeah. because of it that. So you so would good. like highly recommend for anybody who wants to see the yeah. Arabian oryx yeah. in its, yeah, yeah. you so know, in its Anybody who wants to experience the, na- the natural habitat of the region, mm. these would be two um, good places. Mm. So what's next on your list of travel? What's up there in your bucket list? Uh, so uh, one way we're looking at more forests to support in Canada. Yeah. So the one that we have in Nova Scotia is a part of a UNESCO biosphere. So mm-hmm. it connects North Atlantic Ocean to Haley Lake and these are these are bird sanctuaries all around us. Mm. So I'm looking at more forests to protect. Mm. Um, so for that, I'm doing a lot of travel. Um, we're looking at a few places in India. 
so mm-hmm. near your home in kaziranga oh amazing yeah so okay. we are we are hoping that with the government of assam mm-hmm. uh, we're able to make a difference in extending the rhino habitat area mm-hmm. uh, then uh, goa mm-hmm. uh, we are talking to the government there to see if uh, degraded lands can become you know flourishing landscapes mm-hmm. uh, we're also have a very interesting conversation on right now in orissa uh for mangrove uh, restoration so, so all these travels yeah, are coming up yeah so these three up, yeah. travels are you know imminent yeah. uh in india and equally in canada mm-hmm. we're also looking at going back to the uk uh, in summer next year mm-hmm. uh we travel and visit our forest in wales mm-hmm. and i do the forest bathing which i spoke to you about mm-hmm. over there um it's quite spectacular because the mosses and lichens actually form a carpet which is probably 1 feet Hi. Right? Mm-hmm. And then you when you're walking on it it's almost like you're floating in air. You know. Wow. So it's a great experience yeah. and we, you know we spend some time there. Yeah. So that's coming up next. Um and yeah it's a, it's a long list. We've almost come to the end of the podcast. Uh, I hope you know we've been able to tell our listeners about sustainable travel <laughs> if I can call it that. I am definitely going to try and be more responsible. So thank you very much for this uh, Vikram. Really appreciate you coming in here for the podcast today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me over. Thank you. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. I hope our conversations have fueled your wanderlust and inspired you to explore the world in new and exciting ways. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and leave us a comment below and let us know what you thought of today's episode. Until next time, safe travels and keep exploring.